Greetings, eco-nerdlings. In this podcast, we're going to be discussing aquatic ecosystems and taking a look at our case study, which is going to be Hurricane Katrina hitting New Orleans. So I'm going to start you off with this gorgeous picture of ocean meets land with a quote from one of my favorite people of all time, Jacques Cousteau, who of course was a marine biologist. The sea, once it casts its spell, holds one in its net of wonder forever. So most of Earth is covered with water, and most of that water is going to be composed of salt water. And the global ocean is divided into four main areas. We have our Atlantic right here. We have the Pacific, which is divided into the North and the South Pacific, the Arctic, which is going to be up here, and we have the Indian Oceans. Then we have fresh water, which is going to be based off of land. We're going to have lakes, streams, rivers, as well as glacial water. So this is going to be the ocean planet right here. This would be pretty much the ocean hemisphere, and this is going to be our ocean land hemisphere. So we have different life zones that occur, that occur in aquatic areas. So we have saltwater zones, and then we have freshwater zones. In saltwater, life zones include oceans and estuaries, coastlands and shorelines, coral reefs, which have the highest biodiversity in the ocean, as well as mangrove forests. Freshwater life zones include lakes, rivers and streams, as well as inland wetlands. So these are a couple of pictures of different types of aquatic systems. We have beautiful lakes, we have rivers, we have the ocean. So very, very pretty ecosystems are usually involved with aquatic ecosystems. At least I like to think so. So aquatic ecosystems, like those of land, have different types of abiotic factors that influence what organisms can survive there and where they can survive. A means without, and remember that biotic or bio means life. So these are going to be the factors that are non-living, meaning they have never lived, such as weather, that type of thing. So we have salinity or dissolved salt in the water. That's going to be how much salt is in those water, and that's going to be measured in parts per million. We also have water temperature, the amount of sunlight that's actually getting through to the zones of the ocean, and that's going to affect photosynthesis rates of the different types of photosynthetic organisms that live there. And then we also have the availability of dissolved oxygen gas in the water. Again, that's going to determine what type of life forms can live where. If there's a low dissolved oxygen content, it's not going to be able to support very many life forms, uh, different types of fish and that type of thing that are going to need a little bit of a higher dissolved oxygen content in order to survive. Also, nutrients such as nitrates and phosphates are also going to be abiotic factors that are found in aquatic ecosystems. And turbidity. Turbidity is basically the cloudiness of the water, which can inhibit photosynthesis. And we're going to use something called a secchi disk later on in the year to determine the type of turbidity, or how turbid the water is. So life in aquatic ecosystems falls within these types. In marine ecosystems, we have plankton. These are free-floating or weakly swimming organisms. They kind of have to go with the flow. So if there's a strong current, they're going to go with the current. They're not going to be able to swim against it and really get anywhere. We have two main types of plankton. We have phytoplankton. Phyto means plant. So these are going to be our plant-based planktons, and those include algae. Then we have zooplankton. Zoo means animal, and plankton means moving around, or basically going with the flow. Free-floating organisms that have to go in the direction of the water. So zooplankton, are, again, are going to be our animal plankton. Those are going to include single-celled protozoa, as well as jellyfish. We then have nectin. These are going to be our really strong swimmers. All of the different types of fish, marine mammals, whales, sea turtles, those are the nectin that you're going to find in the ocean. So, so far we have plankton, nectin. Next, we're going to have our benthos. These are our bottom dwellers. They include sea stars, lobster, mussels, oysters, all of the little critters that crawl along on the bottom of the ocean floor. Those are considered to be benthos. We also have decomposers that break down dead organisms and waste into nutrients that can be reused or recycled in that aquatic environment. Most of them are going to be bacteria. 
Now on terrestrial land or ecosystems, we typically have fungi as well, but in the ocean, bacteria are going to be the main decomposers. And there are four types of aquatic life forms that you see here that we just discussed. We have our plankton. These are different types of phytoplankton right here, very microscopic. A lot of them are single-celled. And then we also have the jellyfish. Our nectin are gonna be our, so our strong swimmers, such as whales, fish, sea turtles. And then we have our benthos. These are the little critters that crawl along on the ocean floor, like our starfish, our brittle stars, mussels, lobsters, all of those guys. So this is the case study that we're going to be discussing a lot when we're talking about our aquatic ecosystems. So most of you are familiar with the city of New Orleans. It's nested between the mouth of the Mississippi River and the brackish estuary lake of Lake Pontchartrain. So there's a series of flood walls that are called levees that protect the city from ocean, ocean surges as far as large, large storms go. So this right here that these two little girls are crawling on is called the levee. And that's going to help to protect the town whenever huge waves crash in from the ocean. So in August of 2005, a huge, massive Category 5 hurricane formed in the Gulf of Mexico. It began taking path and it would lead it directly towards New Orleans on the coast of Louisiana. So there is a huge concern of the effects that this hurricane was going to have, and it occurred immediately. Max Mayfield, who was the director of the National Hurricane Center at the time, conference president of the United States, and he said, quote, I do not think that anyone can tell you with confidence right now whether the levees will be toppled or not, but that's obviously a very, very great concern. So this is the actual release that the National Weather Service issued that occurred in New Orleans. So the Weather Service issued this following warning. It said, devastating damage expected. Hurricane Katrina, a most powerful hurricane with unprecedented strength, rivaling the intensity of Hurricane Camille of 1969. Most of the area will be unhabitable for weeks, perhaps longer. At least one half of well-constructed homes will have roof and wall failure. All gabled roofs will fail, leaving those homes severely damaged or completely destroyed. The majority of industrial buildings will become non-functional. Partial to complete wall and roof failure is expected. All wood-framed low-rising apartment buildings will be destroyed. Concrete block low-rise apartments will sustain major damage, including some wall and roof failure. High-rise office apartment buildings will sway dangerously, a few to the point of total collapse. All windows will blow out. Airborne debris will be widespread and may include items such as household appliances and even light vehicles. Sport utility vehicles and light trucks will be moved. The blown debris will create additional destruction. Persons, pets, and livestock exposed to the winds will face certain death if struck. President George Bush, who was the President of the United States at the time, declared a state of emergency ahead of the storm making landfall. Voluntary and mandatory evacuation orders were issued for the entire region. About 80% of the metropolitan area evacuated. Most of you guys listening to this are probably a little bit too young to remember all of this occurring. You probably had other things going on, uh, but traffic was blocked all the way to Louisiana, and a lot of the evacuees actually wound up in this area or the Houston area, which is where I'm from. So I hope that was helpful. If you guys want to watch this video again or find other environmental system videos, you can check me out at www.nerdlingscience.com. Well, this is the Queen Nerdling signing off. Stay nerdy till next time.